It's time for another trope count, where we count all the traditional small town hot cocoa romance tropes in a Hallmark Christmas movie. The goal? Find the movie that racks up the most tropes. Will it be today's film? Let's find out. A great Hallmark Christmas film must fit the Hallmark feel-good formula. It's a genre of film with repetitive movie tropes that we all love. We will identify the tropes in the four trope categories. Story, Character, Christmas, and Activity. It's all very scientific and it's fueled by hot cocoa. Today we take a look at the 2014 Hallmark film A Cookie Cutter Christmas, starring Aaron Krakow, David Hayden Jones, Miranda Friggin, and Alan Thicke. If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, a baking competition featuring childhood adversaries bring these two kids to fall in love at the end. So bake some Christmas cookies and enter a cookie contest. Let's count the tropes that make up a cookie cutter Christmas. The movie starts off at the annual Greenville Christmas Festival. On stage, two young girls are trying to outsing each other. Turns out that Christy and Penny at one time were best friends and now are competitive adversaries. 20 years later, they are now both teachers at the local elementary school played by Aaron Krakow and Miranda Friggin. They still are in competition using their students to top each other. In her class, the principal interrupts Christy's lesson to introduce the new student. Her name is Lily and she lost her mom a year ago and has had a hard time adapting. Christy invites her to make Christmas decorations with the rest of the class. This brings a smile to her face as Lily mentions that she used to make decorations with her mom every year as one of their Christmas traditions. At the end of the day, Christy reminds her class that the Christmas festival starts that night. Christy and her friend Allison catch a glimpse of James, played by David Hayden Jones, and like what they see. Turns out, he is Lily's father, and as we mentioned, he is a widower losing his wife last year, and a single father raising Lily on his own. Penny notices James, and just like everything else, the two ex-friends begin the competition on who will catch his eye. Christy's mom, Bev, comes to visit for the holidays. In the car, they discuss her permanently moving back from Florida after the death of her husband, Christy's father. Christy is excited for her mom to see how she decorated her home, and I have to point out that this is a terrible decorating job. The home is covered in tinsel and will easily blow away. You can even see that the wind is already blowing it. That night, the Christmas festival begins, and we see that they have kept the same sign 20 years later. Penny is in charge and announces that they are adding a new event, the Teacher Cookie Bake Off. This event will fundraise donations to the Greenville Center of Hope, a new organization that donates food and clothes to the less fortunate run by James. The teacher who wins will also receive money for a class trip, with the winner to be determined by the local restaurateur, Chef Kruger, played by Alan Thicke. Christy claims she signs up for the event to win the trip for her class, but honestly, she wants to get close to Lily's dad, James, and of course, beat Penny. Her mom and friend are surprised by this as they remember she was disastrous in home economics while they share a cup of hot chocolate. The first round of the competition is a 12 minute challenge to bake cookies. Clearly nobody knows what they are doing except for Penny who easily wins this challenge. Not washing her hands until she gets home, Christy decides she needs to learn how to bake. She discusses with her mom that she needs to beat Penny in the competition and they are sucking up to the new dad James. She admits that James is cute and has a heart of gold. Christy practices all night baking cookies. They turn out burnt and hard as a rock. And you may be asking, am I going to count every time they bake cookies in this film? You bet I am. Bev begins to eat the cookie and, oh wait, never mind. she spits it out. We'll take that trope away. The next day, Christy takes a donation to the Center of Hope to catch a glimpse of that cutie James. Competing with Christy, Penny has the same idea and shows up with donations as well. Continuing with their competition, they both invite James and Lily to stop by and see how they have decorated their homes. On the way home, Christy sees that Penny has added a blow-up snow globe into her front yard. Not to be undone, Christy stops at Walmart and buys a giant blow-up Frosty. Lily and James stop by to see the decorations, and they are amazed that the tinsel is not blown away yet. While adjusting the snowman, Christy starts to fall. Luckily, James catches her. This is a common trope that I recently added to my list and is very prevalent in the older films. Realizing she needs help with her baking, Bev and Allison teach Christy the basics of cookie making. After a few attempts, she manages to make an acceptable cookie that they can eat. The cookies are good, but they're not great. Christy's friend Allison asks if she really is in this competition to win the prize for her class or to beat Penny Miller. She remembers how close the two once were and the Christmas pageant where their friendship ended. At breakfast, Christy and Bev discuss each other's love life over a cup of Folgers coffee. 
They both encourage each other to find love again, and Beth thinks James would be a good choice. At the donation center, Christy tutors Lily in math and suggests that Christy make the unique idea of a chocolate cookie. Because everybody loves chocolate. That makes a lot of sense. Christy takes her advice and makes the chocolate cookies for the first round of the competition. At the Christmas festival, the teachers turn in their cookies for the bake-off. Two teachers will be eliminated based on Chef Kruger's score. Miss Howard made coconut snowballs, while Mr. Green turns in his peppermint twists, and Mr. Peters made eggnog drops for the chef to sample. However, I can't award the trope of eating Christmas cookies as the chef barely eats any of these cookies. Look at the size of the bite he takes. Good God, man, take a larger bite and eat the cookie. Rest in peace, Alan Thick. When it's Christie's turn, the look of her chocolate kringles doesn't impress the chef, and neither does the taste as he chokes on a tiny little sliver of cookie. Feeling like she has no hope of winning, she and Penny are shocked when the chef Kruger risks his life and asks to try Christie's cookies one more time. The results are red and Mr. Green and Miss Howard are eliminated. The contest is now down to Mr. Peters, Christie, and Penny. Christie volunteers to babysit and tutor Lily at James's house. They bake gingerbread from one of James' cookie recipes. Turns out that he's a great baker and a cook and has an extensive amount of original recipes. Inspired, Christy practices her baking and is getting better. In school the next day, Christy discusses with her class where they would want to go for a class trip if she wins the cookie contest. The kids encourage her to give the money to charity instead of using it for a trip. In after school, James shows up and Penny invites him to her Christmas party. Assuming that Christy was invited, James discusses meeting up with Christy and volunteers to give her a baking 101 class at his house before the party. He shows Christy the best flavor combination, consisting of salty and sweet. They make caramel with a pinch of salt and it clearly gives Christy enjoyment. If you ask me, maybe a little too much? I just don't think that reaction is entirely from the taste. He shows her the best way to bake cookies and Christy is impressed. They go for a walk drinking hot chocolate and talk about cooking, their mothers, and the rivalry she has with Penny. Christy pretends that it's not a thing, but James isn't buying it. Trying out the techniques that James showed her, Christy bakes the next round of cookies, topped with caramel and a pinch of salt. The semi-final round begins. Throwing shade, Penny gives Chef Kruger milk so he doesn't choke on Christy's cookies this time. Mr. Green makes Santa hat cookies while Penny makes her famous snow globes. When it's Chrissy's turn, she accidentally spills the milk all over Chef Kruger. Fearing that he will hold that against her, she is shocked to learn that Christy and Penny are in the final round. Sorry, Mr. Green. Christy and her mother Bev attend Penny's Christmas party. Trying to impress everybody with her shrimp lollipops and decor, Penny gives everybody an extra treat and sings Silent Night. Not to be outdone, Christy joins in and in the most uncomfortable moment of a Hallmark film ever, each tries to outsing the other. Embarrassed by her actions, Christy leaves the party only to be confronted by James. She admits that her rivalry with Penny is unhealthy and she's done with it. Happy to hear it, he gives her an ornament that Lily made her and inches in for a kiss. Just as they are about to smooch, Penny interrupts, giving us the almost kiss trope. Christy heads home without her mother. Being a true gentleman, Chef Kruger walks Christy's mother home and a new budding romance is about to start. The next day, we get the final baking scene as Christy makes her peppermint drop cookies. That is the ninth time they've made cookies in this film and I had to adjust my spreadsheet just to account for it. Fearing that she is losing out to Christy, Penny visits James and offers to take him around town. Looking uncomfortable and not wanting to tell her no, he offers Penny a cup of coffee instead. With his back turned, Penny takes a cookie recipe out of his book, makes an excuse and quickly leaves so as not to get caught. In an effort to beat Christy, Penny plants the recipe card next to her cookies. She asks James to help fix the table leg and he sees the card. Thinking Christy stole his recipe, he is not happy she would cheat to win. Adding to James's anger, Penny reads over the rules to remind everybody that the cookies must be an original recipe. Chef Kruger tries Penny's snowflake cookies and Christy's peppermint drops and declares Christy the winner. Everybody applauds except for James. Christy, unaware that Penny set her up, is confused when James is cold to her and walks away giving us the traditional third act misunderstanding. Christy, upset, makes a great decision and removes all the tinsel outside of her home. She no longer wants to compete with Penny. She hangs the paper ornament that Lily makes for her, decorating the tree. She must be really upset if she thinks this paper ornament will last very long on the tree outside. 
Christy gives Penny a framed photo of when they were kids. She begins to regret planting the recipe and confesses to James. Apologizes to Chrissy and we get that final kiss interrupted by Lily. So how many tropes does this movie have? Let's count them. Looking at the numbers, A Cookie Cutter Christmas focuses on two teachers behaving badly who live in a small town where no other men must live, feeling the need to compete for the attention of a single father who recently lost his wife and participate in a Christmas cookie bake-off competition judged by Alan Thicke. If we add up the different categories, A Cookie Cutter Christmas has a total of 32 tropes. This film is a crazy story, filled with Christmas activities including an over-the-top cookie competition counting nine times that they bake cookies. We also get two dead family members, two gratuitous product placements for Walmart, and the infamous Red Folgers coffee can that is prominent in all the films from that year. Every time the characters Penny and Christy try to outdo each other, I can't help but think about the SNL sketch with the character Penelope played by Kristen Wiig. I know we as the audience are supposed to side with Christy, but I find myself feeling for Penny. Christy was clearly jealous of her from a young age and admits that she stole her solo. Sadly, Penny felt the need to set up Christy, losing any sympathy I had for her. The chemistry with Aaron Krakow and David Hayden Jones is really good, but my personal favorite is Miranda Friggin. She gets to play the antagonist Penny, and clearly had a lot of fun with this role, and at times, it was really over the top, but I loved it. We also get a strange appearance from Growing Pain's Alan Thicke, who took the acting role as long as he did not have to eat the cookies, apparently. Take the bite, man. Take the bite. Did I miss any tropes? If so, tell me in the comments below. A Cookie Cutter Christmas easily fits into the top position with 32 tropes. That is a crazy amount, and we have to see if the next film can rank higher. We will see with the next trope count featuring Katrina Law, Jordan Belfi, and Patricia Richardson's Hallmark film Snow Bride from 2013. How will that movie rank? Click on the subscribe button to be alerted to when that episode is released if you want to find out. I'm the Christmas aficionado, and remember, stay off the naughty list. Mm -hmm. The time has come for this cookie! Um, nom, 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 oh, nom, 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 um, nom, 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 oh, nom, 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 n